Secondly, look at verse 14. True salvation not only is divine, but verse 14 of chapter 6 of Genesis, true salvation deals with sin. You see what do you mean? Well, the first occurrence of the word atonement is in verse 14. Only atonement means to cover over. And so look what it says in verse 14 of Genesis 6. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood and make rooms in the ark. And listen, cover it inside and outside with pitch. Cover it. Kafar. Atone it. Now you say, what do you mean? Well, the only way I can talk about this is the New Testament says that, that Noah and the ark is a portrait of salvation. And you know what? Salvation is all about that we get inside and outside atoned for our sins. God takes away all external condemnation. God takes away all internal guilt. And he atones for our sins. And so the scriptures tell us that true salvation will always deal with sin. The word for pitch in 6.14 is the same word for atonement used later in the Old Testament. And this is what the New Testament says about our Savior. Matthew 1.21, she, Mary the virgin will bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus. Why? Why call him Jesus? For he will save his people from their sins. If you've never been saved from sin, you've never been saved from hell. True salvation deals with sin. The scriptures go on to say this, John 1, The next day John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and he turned and pointed to him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. True salvation deals with sin. If you have never dealt with your sin, then you are not saved. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin, not in part, but the whole, was nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. If, if your sins have never been dealt with, if your sins have never been taken, if my sins were never taken by Jesus Christ and nailed to the cross, then I have no hope of life eternal. True salvation deals with sin. 1 John 3, 9 and 10 says, For whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him. He cannot sin because he's been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. Do you know what the Bible says? Contrary to current theological notions, the Bible says that saving faith is life-changing faith. And if my life and if your life has never turned from the habitual practice of sin, then it's never turned in faith to Christ. The Bible does not say in 1 John 3, 9 and 10 that we'll never sin. It says that sin no longer dominates our life, that Christ has set us free, the shackles are off. Now, we might voluntarily give in to sin, and we might learn to give in to sin by habit, and we might be grieved by sin. The Spirit of God might be quenched in our life, but there's still a struggle against sin. We're not dominated by sin anymore. The evidence of life eternal is that the back of sin has been broken in our lives. True salvation deals with sin.